Hi everyone, today I am very excited to have these Derwent Chromaflow pencils to show you. Now I these arrived in the post for me and um, there was no gift label or anything so um, I oddly, it's a funny story, I, uh, I thought oh my gosh I've ordered some pencils and I didn't even remember ordering them but no these have been sent to me as a gift but I don't know who from because there was no ticket inside so thank you so much to whoever it was please get in touch because I'd love to send you a little written thank you I you know obviously I'm going to do it here on video it's brilliant thank you so much but I do like to normally do a little private thank you as well but obviously if you're shy or you didn't want to be identified I quite understand but these are lovely pencils now I've seen a review of these from Colour with Claire and they weren't available in the UK when she reviewed them. Oddly they released them, though they're British, they released them in India first, which was most odd. But as soon as they became available in the UK I popped them on my wish list and uh, I've been lucky enough to receive them. Now there's 24 in this tin, as you can see it's quite a small tin and there are two layers inside I'm guessing. I have snipped the tape, there's tape here which I've snipped and inside sorry my light is so bright are uh, it's it's shrink wrapped around the bottom layer so i've made a tiny hole in the shrink wrap so i can unwrap it here now it's monday today and i received these on saturday so i've been when, wanting to open it i haven't even opened the tin until today um in front of you guys because i thought you know it takes the it takes the fun away doesn't it if i do it and even just have a sneaky peek. I have been studying the lid though and looking at the colours and wondering if they were the same as other Derwent. Now I have some other Derwent pencils and I wondered if they were the same as those but we'll see. So let's just pop that in the bin get rid of that plastic. Okay so we have this top layer look and we have, I'm going to try and get it out, it's very tricky to get out and another layer underneath. So let's have a look at everything that we've got. Um, let's start here. We've got a yellow which is called sun yellow, lovely and bright. And then we have another yellow which is called amber gold. I think I might have that in my light bar set. And we have a golden sun which is more of a brownie yellow which is nice. And then we go on to an orange. We have a flame again I can't I don't know if I can bring them close to the camera or not without them going blurred then we have a scarlet this one's very lovely this is called strawberry it's a really pretty pinky color now, as you can see they're all quite flat this one's broken that's a shame this one's salmon and uh, it needs to sharpen but they probably all need to sharpen anyway we have a strawberry. We've already got a strawberry. I wonder if that, no, that's scarlet. This is strawberry. Sorry, I've got muddled. This one is blush pink. It's pretty. This one is pretty. Look at this. This is magenta. It's a very pretty pink colour. This is a lilac, so a paler purple, and a violet. I think I might have a violet in my light bar set, I'm not sure. And the last one in this tray is denim. I love the denim in the light bar, so I'm assuming it might be similar. Of course, they're quite different to the light bar, the barrels are black. In the light bar, the barrels are um, brownish, woodish, they're just wood, they're not painted. This one is just called blue. Let's see, it's quite a pale blue. And this is a bit darker, this blue. And it's called light blue. Looks darker, but we'll see. We'll test, we will test them in a minute. I'm just exploring the tin. I'm sorry, I'm excited. Um, this is turquoise green. I, do, I don't sound as excited as sometimes I am, it's because I'm so tired. This is basil, there's definitely a basil in the light fast. Yeah, I've been awake since half past three this morning, I'm tired. Um, foliage, again, that's in the light fast, I love this shade. 
I think these are a little cheaper than the light fast. This is grass green, another nice green from the light fast. Um, I think these might be slightly cheap. They are still expensive, this burnt sienna. Um, Derwent tend to be anyway, I've always found, even though they're British. A raisin, which is a brown. Um, I always surprised how expensive they are, considering we don't pay an import fee. This one's called natural brown. We have a grey. What's this? Platinum. That's nice. We have a black. They all have numbers, I've noticed as well. But they actually run through the tins. This is number 24. That's 23, 22. So they're actually in number order. So they just run 1 to 24. So the numbers aren't going to tie up with the other sets, I can't imagine. Right, let's start doing some colouring with them. Oh, ooh, sorry, that was a nasty noise. What I decided to do was grab a postcard from this book. This is um, World of Flowers by Johanna Basford. It's the um, German, they don't do the postcards in the English books. I'm going to lean on there. I pick this, I'm going to zoom in because we need to see what we're doing, don't we? Um, I picked this particular postcard because there's a lot of different bits. We can choose different colours to try in different areas. They're all going to need a bit of a sharpen, so you have to bear with me with that as we go. But uh, you're used to me sharpening anyway. So let's go for it. I'm going to start with, I'm just going to work my way through the tin. I think that's the best way. I'm going to start with the yellow. I'm actually not going to sharpen this. This is sun yellow. And I'm just going to see how it comes out without sharpening to see whether we think it's, they're all going to need an initial sharpen. But this is okay. Obviously, it's not pointed, which might make you want to sharpen it, but it seems to be the colour coming out well, you know. Um, I am going to zoom in more. We don't need to see the whole picture, do you? And then you can see, get a really good idea. I'm sure it's not too blurred. Oh, there. So, uh, there's the yellow. I quite like the intensity of that. I still think that looks blurred. Shouldn't be. Mm, okay. Anyway, we'll leave that there. So I like the intensity of that yellow. Um, sometimes yellows can be a little bit weak, but that's nice. This is the amber gold. And I'm going to put some on the bottom of here and see whether it goes on top or not. Oops. It does. And see whether I can sort of blend it in. Which I think I can. That still looks blurred. Is it my eyes? Is there something wrong with my eyes? I don't know. Anyway. Maybe there is. Maybe I'm going blind. I don't know. No, that's not a very nice thing to say, is it? <clears throat> I am just tired, maybe you can't see properly. So we have Golden Sun. Um, I shall try this. Hmm. I think I'll try it here, in the middle of this one. I think I'm going to send this postcard to my niece when it's done. I won't complete it today in this uh, session. But um, we have the flame now. Um, I'm going to do this on the petals of this one. Yeah, she's um, she's starting uni soon. I don't know when her course actually starts, but uh, I thought I'd send her a little bright, jolly, good lucky postcardy. I sent her a postcard quite recently, which I think she she politely said she liked. So uh, see, I know when I was a student, I'm going to sharpen this. It's not really sharp enough. I'm just going to try with my Stedler. Sorry, it's not going to focus up there. Stedler Norris Club sharpener. Because I have got a Derwent sharpener, but it, it's noisy, it's the turn handle one. So I've got quite a sh nice point there. Um, yeah, my um, my Super Point Mini Derwent sharpener is going to be a bit noisy on camera. And uh, also will take ages because it changes the shape of the pencil. Brings it to a finer point. To take The first sharpener always takes a long time. So yeah, I was up really early. My poor boy... He's had a nasty cold, well, from the end of last week, really. 
and uh, I think it's starting college, you know, they haven't been mixing with kids very much for since May and suddenly they're back at, they're at college and they're mixing with, there's like a thousand children in their year and so uh, he has a cold, he had a bit of a temperature yesterday which um, when I told people they went, oh, Covid test, get him and I said no, it's not Covid, we did do a test anyway because we always do one on a Sunday ready for college the next week we were all fine. We've had COVID before, so we know what it's like. It was not like that. Um, and she's, she's like, people are like, well, you haven't had the Delta variant. It's like, no, we haven't. But, you know, I said, when you have a cold, every year it's a different variant. And, uh, but your symptoms are very similar. So I didn't think it would be that different. This was a cold. And um, he's all right. I'm going to use the scarlet now to uh, add some um, colour into the centre of the flower. I'm going to sharpen this one too because I need to get into the middle. But I'm also going to use it on another flower somewhere so you can see what it looks like on its own. So that's very bright, isn't it? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fade it out along the petal so that it can blend into that orange. Look at that. They blend nicely, don't they? Now, the feel of these is interesting. I thought they might... So I've got, um, as I say, the Light Fast. They don't feel anything like the Light Fast. Now, the Light Fast, if you press too hard, they almost feel sticky. These do not feel like that. Um, the Colour Soft, which I also have from Derwent, they are very soft, almost chalky in their feel and this doesn't feel like that either and the um, Derwent Studio I think I've got, was it Artists are really really hard these are not like any of those I would say they feel more like a polychromo in that they're hardish they're not they're not um, sticky and crayon like which is how I sort of think of a Prismacolor um, but they seem more vibrant than a polychromo to me, maybe. But they blend well, you can see. But they blended nicely with the orange. What I will do is do another layer of orange across each petal and blend it back into that scarlet colour. And then they'll mix up properly. Now that's interesting because with a polychromo, you probably need quite a lot more layers to get a colour that vibrant. So that's quite nice that they're quite vibrant, like that a lot. Now, although we've only got 24, I think that's plenty. I don't know if they come in bigger sets, to be honest. I think this might be it. But it means you can mix them up and it means you don't have tons of choice. Sometimes it's really difficult choosing. And I think we've got a good range of colours, but we'll see. We'll get through them and see. Now we've got to. The, now we're at the salmon colour, which unfortunately came broken. So I'm going to give that a sharpen. Mm. My sharpness will hold on a minute. The reason you need to make sure your sharpness doesn't get too full, I've said this many times, is that it will um, break the lead of the pencil. This is sharpening up nicely now. It's There we go. It's quite pale, but it's sharpened up. Um, oh, excuse me. I've got, I think I've got a bit of my son's cold. I'm going to do these ones with this. Oh. Hmm with this delicate colour was what I was going to say oh I did promise to do some scarlet separate to um to the orange so you could see oh, I'll try and remember to do that in a minute so that's this little pale pink it's a cute colour This might be a lot paler than the others. I find that with there's a pale pink in the 
Bambino crayons, which is a lot paler than all the rest. Oh, sorry, I hit the tripod. It's not good, is it? Um, so we'll go back to the scarlet and we'll do something just in scarlet. Um, this one here. So you can just see what it looks like without the orange underneath. So I'm actually just doing an even there because it's quite small. I'm going to try and shade it. There we go. Lays down very nicely, doesn't it? Okay. So now we've got our strawberry colour, which I really liked. What I'm going to use this for is I'm going to do the centres of these. Can't stay in the lines, but uh, never mind. There we go. Now the next one we've got is, oops, is the blush pink, which again is quite a pale pink. I'm going to, yeah, let's do these hearts in this colour. I'm not going to do any shading here, I'm just going to do them quite, I wanted to get quite an intense colour just to see what it looks like. Yeah, that's rather pretty. I wasn't sure whether it would be a bit too similar to the, to the other pale colour, but it isn't. It's very nice. I'd probably do both of these two the same. Mm, but nothing else is the same. Oh, we did those the same. Yeah, so I'll quickly do this one as well, or else I might forget. So, so I'm just using an even pressure on it. Yes, yeah, so I'm thinking about my son this morning. He, um, he's he got a three hour, 10 minute maths lesson first thing. Imagine that first thing on a Monday. But it is his choice. He does choose all his subjects because of his age. So he chose to do maths. And uh, they've, got, they've got two maths teachers and apparently this is their nicer maths teacher. So him and his brother are in the same maths class. This is Magenta, which is rather nice as well. So he'll have his brother there to help him which is good, so if he gets a bit tired and doesn't know what he's doing or gets a bit drifting off it, you know, his brother can give him a nudge, which I'm sure he will. I don't know how well that goes with that pink. That's quite an orangey pink, and this, this is the magenta, and this is a very vibrant pink, which I do like. I shall leave them together, though, because that's what I'm doing. And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to press a little bit harder and put some more layers near the bottom and lighten it up towards the top just to make it look a bit more interesting. Yes, so he's got maths and then he's got a two hour break I think at lunchtime today. He hasn't got to go and study. He's got some, he might do some study but he doesn't have to so he can have a chill if he wants to and then and his brother's got that break because in fact his brother hasn't got any more lessons after that but he's got to go off and have a computing lesson but they're programming and they've just been they're just working at their own pace on their own so he can just take it easy it's only a one and a half hour lesson so hopefully be okay by then um so it's it's a bit of a worry but tomorrow he hasn't got any core lessons He's supposed to go in for a talk. I don't know what it's about. Well, I know what it's called, but they have it every week, so I don't know. They can't have the same thing every week. He's got a tutor session, I think, although that might be swapped because um, he uh, wants to go to the chess club, which clashes with his tutor, so they said they might be able to change his tutor so he can go to chess club because um, his friends are going. And... Uh, None of them want to do any of the other extracurricular activities or enrichment, as they call it. They're all sports. They don't want to do sport. So although they like certain sports like badminton, if you go to that, everyone is really good. And they just feel a bit like they just want to go and have fun. And yeah, so they're not so they're going to go to chess. And one of my boys is pretty good and the other one not so much so. But I think he'll just go along and chat to them and 
yeah, it's something you can put on his CV or um, resume for the um, US listeners. I don't know if you ever used the term CV. It's uh, what's it? Curriculum vitae or something, which is uh, I assume Latin. I don't know. I assume so. I didn't study Latin. Well, my friends did. Okay, so we've done finished that, so we can move on. We've got a lilac, and I am going to do. What should we, where should we go with our lilacs? Over here, I think. Here to this one. I'm gonna. Hmm. Could I, uh, oops, that's not right. My pencils have moved and confused me. We've got a dark purple as well. So I think I'll do the lilac here. So I'm going to try and go a little bit darker in the centre of the petal. And less as I go towards the edge. And then you'll get an idea of what the colour looks like. And then um, I will do the centre bits in the darker purple. So you can see that as well. That will be work well. So yeah, it's I don't understand why they didn't release these in the UK to start with, and they released them in India. I wonder are there a lot of colorists in India? I don't really know. You don't see them in the coloring groups very much, but then why would they be in an English coloring group? This is violet, so uh, it's uh, I don't know. I'm going to do those little tiny pieces in here. I'll do them quite hard actually because I want them to stand out. And I might do the centre. There we go. Okay, we're on to our blues now. So we're going to move on to maybe the big flower because we have got four blues just give me just a sharp and so we've got this is the denim which I do like the shade of denim and I'm gonna go here so closely around there less there same so I'm putting more layers of it here and what I like about this is it builds up nicely in layers it doesn't like sometimes with a with some pencils like Prismas I find if I press too hard and layer it up it goes into a thick sticky gunk I suppose and I think some people like that it means you can sort of smudge them around the paper a bit but that isn't what I'm used to because I'm used to polychromos and this doesn't seem to do that. It obviously gives you a thicker application, but it isn't too sticky, which I like. I don't know whether it says for us what these are, needle. It just says, just grabbing the lid, it says vibrant blendable color with a smooth laid down professional quality and in there that's all about derwent so it doesn't really tell us much if there's anything on the bottom of the tin there is they've been formulated with rich pigments to deliver bold vibrant laid down premium core strength pencils that handle pressure when sharpening and in use Whoop. and then they all shake around in the tin because i've being silly. Oops, there we go. So here's the denim, which I like. That's the end of the first section, the first um, 12. Ooh. And now I'm going to move into the second 10. And this is the blue. So I'm just going to do around here with this blue and we'll get a nice idea it's that's a nice blue I think it, I think that's a Mediterranean sky or blue maybe that's what I would uh, use it for I'm just going to go a bit darker down in these edges so you can see how it looks I'm going to give it a little sharpen because we're getting clumsily out of the lines 
So a few more layers here and less as we go towards the edge so that you can have a good look. Now I will I'm try and do a close up photo of this at the end for you because I don't know why I can't get in. I don't know if it really is blurred or if it's just me. I shall have a look when I play back the video. I haven't changed any of the settings but I'm still sort of getting confident and used to my new camera. So uh, I don't know if it's been fiddled with. It looks just as blurred now as it did when I was closer in though. Maybe it is my eyes. Light blue. I think that looks okay. Hmm. Anyways, I'm gonna go in these loopy bits here with the light blue. I, it looked darker to me on the um, end, on the tip, but obviously that's not a good way to tell what colour things are. So I think if you had other, if you have other Derwent sets, these will work with them because the colours, some of the colours are the same and uh, they're, uh, they'll blend together, I'm sure. But uh, I tend to mix my sets up a bit. Not when I do videos, because I think that's a bit confusing for you. If I grab a Prisma here and a Poly here and a Derwent here and a whole bind there, and it's like, oh, I think sometimes you want to colour along, and so you choose a video with a pencil that you've got. So I don't want to use lots of different types. This is a turquoise green colour. We aren't getting that in focus, are we? Let's try that. And uh, I'm not sure what shade it's going to be. I'm reluctant to put it on a leaf in case it's too vibrant. So I'm going to use it in the centre here instead, just for different. Oh, it is very, uh, it is quite bluey for me to me. But of course, with turquoise, it's interesting. I can talk to my husband and my dad and they'll say it's blue or green and I'll say the opposite. It's, uh, it's really quite interesting. It's very open to interpretation. I think that works well there. And I think that's definitely blurred. I don't know what's going on with me today. Sorry, people. Right, I'm trying to find my next colour because my um, tin tipped around. Now, 16, 17, 20, 19, 18. about this random fiddling. 18, 15, 16, ah oh, yeah. Okay, our next colour is this one, which is the basil. We'll then do some leaves in the green, where should we go? Maybe against here. I think this is quite a vibrant green from what I can remember from the light fast. The greens I found in the light fast are often quite browny in colour, browny greens. Um, there are a few more bluey greens but not very many mid greens. So like grass green or leaf green or apple green. <sighs> there we go, so that one I like. And then we have got, got out of order, the foliage, which uh, is nice. And this is one of my sort of more favourite shades of green. Um, it's a bit like an olive green, I'll show you here. Really, really like that shade. Very, very pretty. I love olive greens. It looks a little bit odd, I've just thought, next to that one. But hey ho, this is a different plant after all. We've got these flowers here, which I shall do at some point. Probably not on the video. So there's that. And we have got a grass green, 
which is more of a mid green if you look color and I will do that I want to do that on these so let's color those and I think these are quite cute and this color just works and we haven't got any space for shading so I'm just putting on quite a heavy layer I'm doing this sticky branchy bit in the same color just because I don't want a brown you know I want it quite this sort of cute colors we will obviously test out the browns but we'll do them elsewhere I think this looks a bit like cherry blossom I'm not aware that cherry blossom has brown right I'm moving around because we've got this colour coming up which is Burnt Sienna and it's this sort of orangey brown colour so I've got to think about where I am going to pop this colour hmm, maybe in the centre of here there we go so you can see that's quite a browny colour it's nice and now we have the Raisin just like this, it's a sort of ready brown. Um, hmm. Let's have a look. Um, yes, up here, look, there's a sort of stick bit. So I'm going to put it in there. I must if we go out of the lines, but hey. Um, I think I'm going to do these as well. I think I will do all these three um, leaves the same when I get around to doing that. As I say, I'm not going to finish this um, on camera. That looks quite red in the camera. It does on the paper a bit. I think I'm, yeah. And here we have a natural brown, which is this sort of mid brown. And I am going to do that one on this bit here. I don't really want loads of brown on here, so we'll just do that bit. Oh, maybe, maybe these two here. There we go. Now we have a grey. I'm sure, I'm going to do with grey. This is the um, platinum colour. Um, I know I can pop it around the edge here. These petals can be platinum. It's quite a light grey, with quite silvery, which is quite nice. Doesn't show up massively. Try pressing a bit harder. But not really. It's quite good using this postcard to demo on because the paper is um, thick, so I can press a bit harder and get away with it. Whereas colouring book, you have to be ever so careful. Now we have a black. I've decided what I'm doing with the black. We're going to go into the centre of these with our black. So I don't want all my centres to be the same. There we go. Now we have white with our very last one. White's always a bit tricky to demo. What I'm going to do is down here we have this one. I'm going to sharpen my white and I'm going to over the top of it and just see whether the white, because obviously it's not going to show up on its own, and see whether it works to uh, blend or get, sits on top or quite whether it does anything to me. It's not really doing anything. Now I'm really sorry if this video is really blurred. It looks really blurred to me and I don't know why. Even when I zoom right out, it still looks blurred. That's better. So I'm really sorry if it's been blurred and horrid for you, but uh, I, I just couldn't get it work, work out what to do. I don't know why. But anyway, I'm going to finish the postcard um, using these pencils, and I will put a photo at the end. I'm going to tidy up some of my colouring on there as well. It's a bit messy. And I'll put a photo at the end so you can see the finished product. But I am enjoying using these, I have to say. I like them. Um, they blend nicely. They go down well. You can get a nice different tones of colour out of each one. 
So um, I am very happy. And uh, when I'm done, you can uh, judge for yourself. But thank you very much for watching. And a huge, huge thank you to whoever it was that sent me these lovely pencils. Thank you so much. And happy colouring. <laughs>